Hi everyone, a bit of a different camera angle now. I actually have space to put you there, but probably only for like a few weeks or a few months, I'm not too sure. Anyway, in this video, we're gonna talk about trying to stay interested in your creative projects, something that I'm not particularly good at. But this has been quite interesting for me recently because I've been speaking to CG Matter, as I seem to be doing a bit more frequently nowadays. We like to hang out in the Blender Nest server and just, you know, kind of chill around a bit. But um, it seems to be like a common thing between maybe attention deficit, also kind of like neurodivergent people which for some reason tend to gravitate towards this community. I think it's something to do with like the freedom of expression and free software and like YouTube and everything colliding in one place where the place that people like this get their entertainment and also kind of satiate that creation desire. And it's like a big kind of Venn diagram that overlaps and that's where this community sits. Anyway, there's a big struggle in trying to stay interested in projects that you've created. Like a lot of the time it feels like you're not directly in control of how interested you are in a particular project. And that's annoying. That's something I struggle with because like I make so many products and projects and even kind of in that there are so many sub kind of cultures and interests and projects as well so for example youtube you know we could do like a whole month doing just art focused things we could do another month on community things if i wanted i could do like a whole month on ai art things and kind of keep fluctuating between them which isn't necessarily good for kind of maintaining an audience because well it has to be an audience which is used to or kind of understands that fluctuation one that isn't there for a very hyper specific purpose and i think it's quite difficult because it means that for people like us that want to keep jumping around interests it's quite difficult to build a dedicated audience because we're kind of on our own paths and trajectories that, that don't necessarily line up with everyone's desire for consumption if that makes sense so i feel like part of the job a part of the work is to find ways to allow yourself to kind of explore those varied interests while keeping it all within this one umbrella and continuously month after month year after year like the whole suite of all these discussion videos on the second channel and the ones on the primary channel as well it's just like they're all the same threads kind of discussing the same kind of idea which is how do we make ourselves more effective creators I do think to a certain degree there's like a certain number of changes we can make in our life, kind of just paying attention to how we react, to how we work, when we get bored, how quickly we adapt to new interests, and is there anything, even in our physical space, with the technology we're using, with the workflow we're applying, that will make us more effective at producing content throughout all those different interests in a way that benefits all of them. So there are a few things, like for example with the video recordings, there's like the general stuff to make yourself more efficient at making videos, so for me it'll be stuff like don't write full scripts. We did that for ages, like maybe a year or two, a couple of years maybe a bit more it depends on the type of video and discovered that it was just like a horrible idea because it's just like writing an essay for school you're going to be procrastinating on it and you'll feel like you can't start making something until that script is done so it's just like one big roadblock so with something like that it's like okay well it doesn't matter what interest it is don't write a script for it because it's just not going to benefit all of them so obviously when thinking about things like that like the more freedom you have the better for kind of creating stuff basically don't lock yourself into a workflow where every part of the process requires a large time investment because it doesn't give you much flexibility there's only so much you can do though because like for video stuff ultimately like the most effective way of doing it would be to do everything in one take but because i always stop and like think about what i'm going to say next especially in improv videos like this which aren't scripted there are going to be like really weird awkward gaps that are just kind of not very enjoyable to watch. So it's like going for a tick list. Okay, well, this is something we can change, which is going to benefit us no matter what we're interested in. And this is something that won't benefit us. But that's like quite a simple example. Things get a bit more complicated when talking about wider interests. So for example, if one day you're interested in kind of making a tool for someone and the next day you're interested in something that's just completely out of left field for what you've been doing for years, which is very possible. So for example, with Tom, it would be, because Tom is CG Matter's name, deciding to walk across America. So he started doing that, he rebranded the whole channel to I'm Walking. It's now back to CG Matter again. Like if you watched that content, you'd be able to see that it's like this interesting compromise between a mind, a creative mind, that's going through a swing. And I would hazard to say that it's probably something to do with kind of feeling stagnated and trying to break out of a rut that kind of like triggers a massive direction change, which is something that I tend to experience. And someone that's still trying to hold on to this workflow process. So actually you know, learning to make content on the fly, on the day to day. That was interesting to me because it kind of gave me inspiration to try some new techniques as well. But it's interesting because when you watch other people do that, it kind of feels like we're all trying to solve the same problem which is how do we keep ourselves free enough to explore different interests, but also stable enough to be able to output content from it because that's required to kind of like maintain a living, maintain a growth, maintain an audience, etc. And it doesn't work out. 
it's like a question. It's like a, a mathematical formula that no one has a precise answer to because, well, I don't think there is an answer to it. And you know, all of this is putting aside the things like, for example, sometimes I find myself working on something. Like again, I just did a video about drawing sketches or like again, I just did a video about drawing sketches and stuff and I've been playing with some music recently. I feel like really self-conscious about sharing any of that stuff, but I share it to like a couple of very specific friends. And there are even some 3D art projects that I don't like sharing because I feel really self-conscious about them. But it's like, sometimes you feel like you have something there and you're ready to express like this divergent interest, but there's still just like a confidence block there. Or maybe it's not even a confidence block. It's like, there's a block when you think ahead to the process of putting it out. Like if it's far, like if it's too far out of left field for what you've been doing so far, you want to like edit it a bit more to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more entertaining for people. But the idea of having to do that also becomes a mental block because it requires more effort. You know, it's foresight for how you're going to invest that time. So it means you don't really want to do it or you kind of hold on to that project until it reaches a more mature state that no matter how you present it, it will be impressive or until you can come up with like a guideline for a way to explain it in an entertaining way. So for example, I'm just going to uh, load up Blender to show you this. For me, it might be something like this uh, cultural project of mine where I've been kind of designing like these faience figures and beads and a currency system that kind of allows for geometric shapes as part of like the, the currency or the monetary expression and stuff like that. But, you know, though I would love to talk about the reasoning behind this project, just a couple of figures or something isn't really enough for like a main channel video. The way it might be, like if I could explain it well enough, but when you're thinking about like thousands of viewers, it's like putting myself into the mind of the varied audience, would I find this interesting enough? So it's like, okay, well, let's hold on to this and keep working on it until it reaches a more mature state. And there's kind of more stuff there. So that's something as well. And a lot of the time you don't reach that more mature state, which is kind of a bit disappointing, I suppose. Cause it's like, you're holding on, you're holding on, you're holding on, you're working on something. And then it just disappears because again, your interests change. So again, I think like talking about this formula or trying to answer this formula for how do we express ourselves properly online as creatives to try and keep this output, try and keep people connected with what we're doing. It's just like living a constant series of compromises day after day. And it's not like that's necessarily kind of a super disappointing thing or a bad thing. It is disappointing to a certain degree because we want to be able to just like, you know, output and express and have it also be interesting and entertaining for people because inspiring people is enjoyable. Putting aside all the stability aspects like money and that, actually feeling kind of more on a spiritual level that you're having an influence over the universe outside of your perception frame is interesting because it feels like magic. So basically to try and explain that a bit more, what I mean is so my perception frame would be like my day-to-day -day life, everything I can see, everything I feel, like the limits of my emotional experience, the limits of what I can see, my 3D mental map of my entire world, like my home and everything around it and stuff like that. And that's my perception frame. And it's entirely different from someone else's perception frame in their world. I can't visualize where they live because I've never been there. That's like rule two of my policies for life is you don't know what you don't know. So this is my reality and that's someone else's reality. And when you think about magic, it's like, okay, magic in a fantasy sense is something which disrupts reality. It introduces chaos into the mix. It lets you play with the rules and stuff. So I consider like inspiring other people magic in the kind of limited sense in the way that you can put something out on the internet and then someone else's world in their own perception frame has slightly changed because of something you've made. So on a kind of like spiritual or philosophical level, I think that's really interesting. I've also described outputting stuff as like um, painting on cave walls. I used to describe it like this in the Blender Nest podcast where if you feel kind of like stuck in your own life and the kind of no matter what you're trying, things aren't really going anywhere by putting stuff out online, it kind of feels like you're sending a message or you're pushing out into the universe, like the Voyager spacecraft, as if to say, hello universe, I'm here, I'm an actual living, breathing thing, I'm having emotional experiences, here's what I can output. 
So I guess like a follow-up question to all of this discussion is, is there any way we can package this experience into like guidelines for other people as well? Because I feel like we're actually, I guess, on like journeys of discovery. And I like to think that everyone that goes on their own journey can pick up new information that other people haven't found before. Obviously, there's going to be information that people have already bumped into. But I feel like in a way, if we get like any success online, which some of us do have to a certain degree, we should be taking little tidbits that we can and then passing them on to other people so it can make their path easier. Now, in the coming years, like in 10, 20 years time, that the people that are going to be expressing their creativity, making content and sharing it with the wider world, are going to be doing it in a different medium or a different format. I don't know what that will be. I mean, the websites will change, the technology will change, etc. But I still feel like it's important to kind of pass knowledge down or experiences down so people can resonate with it. I guess in my kind of limited sense, it will be something like just keeping you up to date on how the workflow changes, what things work and what things don't work, what kind of tech I'm using, how I'm stringing it together, um, like if I feel like it's easier doing things in a certain way then maybe kind of letting people know okay well I have discovered this and maybe you want to give this a try and that's something I kind of do like privately with other creative friends it'll be things like okay obviously don't script stuff but also if you record two audio things it'll be easier to kind of modify this and then reconnect afterwards and here's a tool that we could test for like auto editing things down and you know and I'm sure there are many communities kind of dedicated to this productivity cult side of things but I do think there is kind of more you know emotional experience to be shared as well because again that's one of the things I talked to a couple of other creators about like the happiness satisfaction of what we're making or do we feel happy with the workflow do we feel happy that we can actually express ourselves enough while maintaining a job and what types of content do we make where we actually feel kind of the most satisfied with life in general or that process so generally to try and give a tidbit what i found is that the more structured something is the less enjoyable it becomes at least for me so structure begets expectation for example when doing a series of content knowing that something has to come next in the series is for me at least another one of these mental blocks because there's an expectation for it to exist that might sound a bit weird like okay well of course it has to exist you have to know what you're going to make to actually make it but i feel like there's something paradoxically where you know you have to make it that prevents you from making it probably sounds really stupid what i mean is for things to be enjoyed they are best improvised and done in the moment, kind of in the moment of enjoyment, done because you want to do them, not because you told yourself you have to do them. The act of telling yourself you have to do it in advance removes the enjoyment because you know it's a chore now. Even if you enjoyed it beforehand, or at least in some episodes throughout that process, it has become a chore just because you've made it regular. So thinking about something for me like the Community Roundup series, which has taken me quite a long time to prepare things in between, it's a series, but how do you convince yourself it's not a series to be able to make it enjoyable to make again? So this is where we kind of get into like the deep level psychology of creative content production to try and maintain satisfaction while also following structure and expectation. I don't know, but one thing I have noticed is that when I moved over to using Notion to track everything, I kept a column of the different tasks and each task representing like a different person or a project I was going to show in the video. I thought this was going to make me more efficient at making those community roundup projects because I used to just like write not scripts but kind of text guides with links on like a Google Docs thing. But having them split separately into these different tasks on the column, even when I could see the whole column, made me less effective at making the content and preparing it. Because when you can see them as individual tasks, again, they look like many tasks. So it's another mental block. But having everything right there on like just a Google Sheets page, just like one page with all the text blending together, makes it seem not like so many tasks. So essentially the column system is more structured, so we avoid it. I say we, it's me. But if you're resonating with what I'm saying, then it's also you. So does that make sense? Like the more structure there is, the less effective I am at making content. So strictly speaking, there's a paradox because when you're kind of getting into larger scales with these projects, you need some form of organization because for some of these like Adam projects and stuff, I have like hundreds of like it, things to investigate and tasks to do and things to check out because I'm like collating as much information as possible. So just keeping that in one like text document is not good enough, but also too much structure puts you off of it. Also hiding anything. So what I mean is you might say, okay, well maybe you could have a text document, but you click on it and it takes you to the next thing like a wiki system, which is technically what Notion does, but no, because that's also just hiding stuff so it's not immediately visible. So it's like you need a way to show thousands of data points instantly, which just isn't really possible. Anyway, that's a bit of a tangent. Like, basically, what I'm discovering is there must be chaos in the process for the process to be effective. Guides must be simple, and yet 
present extreme amounts of information. I've also found I need to put more trust in my own ability to just make stuff up on the fly. I nearly swore then. For example, I sat down now to do this video because I knew I wanted to make a video. I didn't know what about, but I know generally I should talk about things which I'm kind of passionate about or, you know, discussions like this also become a form of therapy for me and sometimes you feel like you need it, especially with like a lot of stuff kind of changing in my life right now. But if I wasn't confident in my own ability to speak about things and I would, you know, for the sake of safety, over prepare and script something that would take ages and ages and ages but just having some trust in yourself sometimes like this not even knowing what you're going to do just having some trust in your ability to come up with something on the fly is an effective like workflow tool so obviously I'm still learning about these things, but like as we've been going through the months of this organization, I've been picking up bits of information and then like this, trying to give them to you just in case you might find this useful. So it seems like possibly as expected, possibly common sense, the, the truth behind effective workflows lies in compromises a lot of the time. Should you be highly organized or highly simplistic? Well, it's not either of those things. That's not what's effective. We need to be like somewhere in the middle that's parts of each, but specifically designed for your own kind of mentality, your own neurodivergence. So I'm trying to find ways now to embrace the chaos. I'm going to take a step back from how I was preparing videos in Notion. I'm going to keep the dev projects the same in Notion because I need that information there and it's very well structured at the moment. So I don't want to disrupt that because that's a very valuable kind of database of information. And it has been working quite well when I've actually entered those development phases, like just having the task there all well and good. But I think I'm going to prepare videos in a different way. Maybe I can hijack part of like the OCD process. I was thinking about this, like treating videos like bounties where I have a desire to like clean things up and tidy my desk. It's not like being disgust sensitive, it's more just like OCD. Where maybe if I have like little pieces of paper just with a very brief description of what I need to record on it, if there's no link that is. Like if it's just a tutorial, oh this file explain what's going on, something like that. Maybe if I have those laying around I can look at them go, oh I want to clean this up, okay let me record this then throw it away, something like that. But then again I don't think most of my videos could be condensed that shortly, only if they're like tutorial demonstrations and I'm not really going to be doing many tutorials from now on because they don't perform well. It depends on if it's like a really unique technique, then I will do one. We'll see. I shouldn't like say I will or will not do something because like we said, interests change. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I want to go back to like Google Docs type simplified guide text, like just one page general breakdown of what's going on, like not a script. Because having all of the prep in one place immediately there just to be like your guide, like your DNA structure for the video, that's always seemed to be effective. And it also means you have the links there so you can click on them as well and kind of bring things up on the screen like if you want to show stuff on the internet. Anyway, yeah, that's just some like brain candy therapy session with Kurt, trying to stay as an effective creative individual and trying to figure out the formula for their own creation process in the midst of chaos and many life changes. So if you made it this far through the video, please put something related to the moon in the comments because it's actually dark outside now, so I guess it's appropriate. And also feel free to share your thoughts and random ramblings in the comments. I do read every comment. So have a fantastic day everyone and I will see you next time.